welcome to the History Lord. You join us here today and we're on the embankment and behind me is a memorial to a chap called Samuel Plimsoll. Who? Who? Yes, I quite right, James. Who is Samuel Plimsoll? Well, he's an unsung hero. He probably did a lot, well, he did a lot. He probably did more than most people to help the safety of merchant seamen. So let's have a look at his life story, shall we? Welcome to London. Samuel Plimsoll was born in Bristol, but his family soon moved up to Sheffield. He left school at an early age and became a clerk at a local brewery called Rawson's. And it was here he rose to be the manager. In the early 1850s, he came to London to try and make his fortune as a coal merchant, but sadly he failed and he was actually reduced to destitution. He found himself for a time living in common lodging houses. It was through this experience that he learned to sympathise with the struggles of the poor. And when his good fortune returned, he resolved to devote his time to improving the conditions of the poor and reduce poverty. He directed his efforts especially towards those things that were known at the time as coffin ships, unseaworthy and overloaded vessels. They were often heavily insured and unscrupulous owners risked the lives of all of the crew as they too were insured. Plimsoll was elected as the Liberal Member of Parliament for Derby in 1867 and he endeavoured in vain to pass a bill dealing with the subject of safe load lines on ships. The biggest problem? There were still a number of MPs, members of Parliament, who had influence from ship owners or were ship owners themselves. He published a well-known work in 1872 called Our Seamen and in 1873 Plimsoll's motion got a royal commission and that was appointed. In 1875, a government bill was introduced, which, although Plimsoll thought was inadequate, resolved to accept. There is one incident in Parliament that's worth a mention. It was on the 22nd of July in 1875 that the Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli announced that the bill would be dropped. Plimsoll lost his self-control and he actually called members of Parliament, villains, and also shook his fist in the Speaker's face. The Prime Minister Disraeli moved that he be reprimanded, but it was Lord Hartington who agreed to adjourn the matter for a week to allow Plimsoll to cool down. Eventually he did, and he made an apology. But a number of people did agree that the bill had been stifled by the pressure of the ship owners, and the popular feeling forced the government to pass the bill in the following year, but it was amended into the Merchant Shipping Act. Now, this gave very stringent powers of inspection to the Board of Trade and a mark that indicates the safe limit to which a ship may be loaded, and that became known as the Plimsoll Line or the Plimsoll Mark. Samuel Plimsoll was re-elected for Derby at the general election in 1880 and by a greater majority, but he actually gave up his seat to William Harcourt, uh, believing that the latter, as Home Secretary, could advance sailors' interest more effectively than any private member could at the time. He was actually offered a seat by 30 constituencies, and eventually he was an unsuccessful candidate in Sheffield Central in 1885, and he didn't re-enter the House of Commons. He later severed ties from the Liberal Party, and he became estranged from them, in what he regarded as a breach of faith and neglecting the question of shipping reform. He was for a number of years the honorary president of the National Sailors and Firemen's Union and he drew attention to the horrors of cattle ships as well, where animals were transported under appalling conditions. He passed away in Folkestone on the 3rd of June in 1898 and he's buried in a churchyard in Kent. My paternal grandfather was uh, Royal Navy during the First World War and he was Merchant Navy uh, from 1930 all the way through until about 1946. So my family have got a lot to thank Samuel Plimsoll for. He's had various honours throughout the years. Uh, in 1920, um, he was, his name was given to the Plimsoll shoe, the sort of like running shoe that uh, is very famous in uh, British schools for children. Also, in Finsbury Park in North London, uh, there's Plimsoll Road, which was named after him. And a uh, little confession to make, that's where my now husband and uh, used to live down Plimsoll Road, so I know it quite well up in Finsbury Park. There you go, I'm waffling as always. Thanks for watching, we do hope you enjoy these videos, and if you do, please subscribe and tell your friends as always. 
And if you want to see what we do outside these videos, have a look for James's YouTube and TikTok channel. That's called Last Line Films or go to historylord.co.uk and see about a walking tour of London. Thanks for watching and we'll see you very soon indeed. Take care. Johnson Sirens, they're back again. <laughs>